Well, hey there, campers, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Camp Cryptid. I'm your host, Erica Fett, and I'd like to say thanks so much to everyone that checked out last week's episode all about England's phantom cats, like the Beast of Exmoor, the Beast of Bodmin Moor, and just all the overall big cat activity around the regions of Scotland and England. As a cat lady, I'll never complain about too many cats, and those of you who know me know I have been hit multiple times with the cat distribution system. But this week, we are traveling down to the Amazon rainforest, one of the most extensively vast, important, and beautifully diverse regions in the entire world. Now, while this region holds so many plant and animal species that are both important to the world and extremely deadly, the Amazon also holds many species of plants and animals that remain unknown, as well as many secrets and mysteries that puzzle us even today. So let's get started. One of the last episodes, I think the Ohio Grassman episode, when I said when it comes to Bigfoot, many people associate it with only being in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. However, sightings of Bigfoot-like creatures happen all over the world, from Asia to England, and in this case, even deep in the Amazon. The Mapinguari is a Bigfoot-like creature that resides in the Amazon. Sightings of this creature range from small to incredibly big, but it was always described as being ape-like and covered in hair. Some people say that these sightings of the Mapinguari may be that of the giant sloth or just another misidentification of a large mammal. But those who have seen this creature are set on it being a Bigfoot of the Amazon. Now, another ape-like human creature was described by an explorer by the name of Colonel Percy Fawcett. And Fawcett said that the Maracoxi was also a Bigfoot-like creature that had been spotted in the Amazon rainforest. These creatures are bipedal and ape-like and said to be around 5 to 7 feet tall, covered in dark or reddish-colored hair. However, stories of this cryptid speak of its aggression and being very, very territorial. Now, Percy Fawcett wrote about the Maracoxi in his journal on his expedition to find the lost city of Z, which we will get into later this episode. But in this journal, Fawcett described the Maracoxi as great ape-like brutes who looked as if they scarcely evolved beyond the level of beasts. He also said that the ape men were as hairy as dogs with pig-like eyes hidden by the overhang of hair. I went ahead and attached a copy of Lost Trails, Lost Cities, uh, the journal published by Percy Fawcett, uh, so that you can go check it out in the Camp Cryptid Reddit, where you can also read all about it for free on the Internet Archive if you feel like doing a little digging of your own on this topic. But from his journeys and exploration into the Amazon, Colonel Fawcett also told stories of other tribes in the Amazon, and even those tribes warned that the Maracoxi were cannibals, warning Fawcett and his crew that a run-in with them would be deadly, and that they would end up in the cooking pots of the Maracoxi as their next meal. Now, the sightings of the Maracoxi could absolutely be another type of Bigfoot in South America, but it could also be a sighting of a few different things as well. One of those things that people theorize that it could be is that of primitive tribes of Neanderthals. Fawcett wrote in his journal that they were primitive and couldn't speak. They only made grunts and simple noises. They used primitive bows and had primitive shelters. So the idea that it could be a tribe of lost Neanderthals could be one explanation. Another explanation is that this is early times when this was just a British explorer who thought every tribe living off the grid is just some type of primitive human. And while I won't excuse cannibalism, I mean, sure, they ate people, that's definitely not good. But there's some ways of life that are simple or basic, but that doesn't mean that people are savages right off the bat. But this tribe could have also used animal pelts and furs to camouflage themselves in the dense and dangerous forest. And with Fawcett and his crew being at a distance, it would probably look like they were covered in hair. So whether or not the Maracoxi is just a simple tribe or a lost tribe of Neanderthals or an actual Bigfoot creature residing in the Amazon, that is one mystery that the Amazon still holds to this day. And I will say that Fawcett and his crew aren't the only people who have seen these Maracoxi. There have been numerous sightings of them from many people within the Amazon and in the surrounding regions. So uh, the Maracoxi is definitely a mystery as to what it could be. But while we are on the topic of Colonel Fawcett, the real reason he was out in the Amazon was to discover the mysterious and elusive Lost City of Z. 
And on the search for that lost city, he encountered many things aside from the Maricoxy. And one of those encounters was supposedly with an anaconda that was over 60 feet long. So, (laughs) we all know the movie Anaconda, right? (laughs) Brought to life. (laughs) Uh, I just couldn't imagine seeing a, a snake that was even 20 feet long. And side note, the only time I've ever seen an anaconda was at the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago. And for those of you who know me, you know I love reptiles and you know I'm like totally, I love snakes and I love lizards. Oh my goodness. I like, I was at Mothman, which I'll get into a little bit later, but there was a girl walking around with her lizard and I was just so excited, but I love snakes. And I will tell you when I was at the shit aquarium in Chicago and they had an anaconda exhibit, I looked at that snake and I said, that snake is evil. (laughs) And so that is the only snake that has ever scared me in my entire life. I am terrified of anacondas and just the thought of a 60 foot snake and me being five, you know, almost, well, I'm a little under five, three, but I am deeply afraid of ever going to the Amazon and just being consumed by a giant snake. That would just be the worst way, the worst way to go. (laughs) So maybe I'll have to hold off on ever visiting the Amazon for now. (laughs) But while we're on the topic of the lost city of Z, imagine an ancient city carved out of the surrounding hills and mountains, hidden away deep in the dense overgrowth of the rainforest of the Amazon. It wouldn't be that far of a stretch to think that after hundreds and maybe thousands of years, the jungle just consumed that site with vines, trees, and other shrubbery, concealing the locations. Now, I'll actually post a photo of what Machu Picchu looked like before they uncovered it, and I'll post that in the Camp Cryptid Reddit. So make sure to go take a look there just to get an idea of how the jungle takes over after time and even takes over with massive sites like Machu Picchu. Uh, I saw this photo and I said, it is no wonder why people can't find things in the Amazon because the jungle just takes it back over after time. So definitely go take a look at that picture of the before and after and you'll get a real good idea (laughs) of how these locations can be completely concealed. So, I mean, it really just adds to the idea that the jungle consumes everything and adds to the mystery of what really is sitting below the vines and overgrowth that could still be hidden there. But to round off the story of Percy Fawcett on his search for the ancient lost city of Z, to add to more mysteries of the Amazon, you know, he and his entire crew ended up vanishing in the rainforest, and no one still knows what really happened to him. Whether he and his team succumbed to the elements of the jungle, or were food for some of the creatures there in the wilderness, or were food for the Maricoxi, the fate of he and his men is still a mystery. Now, side note, modern-day scientists have mapped out areas of the Amazon using LIDAR, and those scans have actually proven that numerous areas have structures or earthworks where civilizations could have existed that are laying under the growth of the forests of the Amazon. Now, also with deforestation of the rainforest, many earthworks have been uncovered that were also once hidden away. So who really knows what else we will uncover with time in the rainforest? There are many signs that the rainforest was the home to many great and advanced civilizations in ancient times. And because of diseases like smallpox that was carried over from European explorers, those great civilizations could have fallen to disease and eventually lost in time as the growth of the Amazon retook the land. But between ancient lost civilizations of the Bigfoot and the Amazon, these massive giant snakes that could exist, or the fate of Percy Fawcett's expedition, the Amazon holds so many mysteries within it still to this day. So, my calling to you is one, save the rainforest. You know, growing up as a kid in the 90s, the rainforest and things like Ferngoli really stuck with me to this day. So, I'd also like to add, finally, I've updated the Camp Cryptid Bonfire Shop, and there's a new Camp Cryptid shirt that's listed, where 100% of the profits go towards the Rainforest Trust, which is an amazing nonprofit that is dedicated to the conservation of the rainforest. So, make sure to go check that out, because a lot of you have been asking about more Camp Cryptid shirts, and I finally listed it, and I said, what better way to to drop a shirt than to have us all support the rainforest, right? And with this, it kind of just worked out. With this episode, I was like, this this is my calling right here. <laughs> now, two, go do some digging on the mysteries of the Amazon in your free time. I mean, this region holds so many wonders, and maybe you can uncover one of them. 
so yeah, that's a very simple little deep dive of the mysteries of the Amazon. I know that there are so many different other things that go along with the Percy Fawcett expedition. That is one I could probably do an entire episode on because there's some other little side tidbits about it, like the fact that Percy Fawcett had this little idol that uh, I don't remember who gave it to him, but he thought that he could look at this idol and it told him the place that this lost city of Z supposedly was. So there's a lot of there's a lot of little weird tidbits about this story. And there's a side note that this was like his third expedition to the rainforest. So he had been there multiple times and went back finally. And this was his, you know, last trip that we know of to the rainforest. So it's a very interesting little story. I did go through and watch The Lost City of Z because <laughs> I was like, okay, let's just watch this and see, you know, what they go into and what they don't touch on in the story. And it was very interesting to watch. Now, I will say a lot of you saw on Instagram that I was at the Mothman Festival this past weekend. And and I want to say thanks so much to everybody who was there. Some of you stopped by when I was handing out some stickers and said that you liked my podcast. So thank you so much. <laughs> I also got to hang around a lot of amazing vendors and say hi to people. And it was a great time. And I definitely look forward to next year. For those of you who went this year, you know that it was a scorcher outside. I, The moment I walked over the bridge, I was like drenched in sweat. It, I was not prepared for the elements that day. <laughs> On Saturday, I was just a puddle of sweat and I just did not realize that the sun would just be beaming down the entire day. But that being said, I was much more prepared on Sunday and Sunday was a lot less crowded and a lot more relaxed. And it was really nice just to go talk to the vendors, check out all of the amazing merchandise, go see the Mothman statue again. So if, if you are ever in Point Pleasant, I would definitely recommend stopping by, at least seeing the Mothman statue. And the good news is the Mothman Museum is literally right next door to the statue. So it's really great. And we went to the little coffee shop right there on the corner by the Mothman statue. And it was just a great time. I will say, even though it was so hot outside this weekend... Everybody was so kind and everybody was so nice and everyone was so excited just to be out in the community, supporting the community members and supporting all the vendors that came and traveled to be there. And it was wonderful, amazing art, amazing products. And I was so excited to finally get to meet some of the people in the community that I had been following on Instagram and to finally get the chance to say hi in person. So yeah, I'm very, very excited. If you get to go to Mothman Festival, I think they hold it in September of year. So Y'all, we got to go next year. Okay, in full force, we're going. <laughs> but aside from Mothman Festival, I am doing a few conventions coming up. So I will be at New York Comic Con as a podcast guest. Yay! So if you're going to be at New York Comic Con this year, uh, it is October 17th to the 20th. I will be in the River Pavilion. So those of you who saw me last year at my booth, same exact areas last year, which is if you're looking at the main show floor, no matter what side you're looking at, if you're looking at the entrance on the left hand or the right hand side, if you look in the middle of where both of the main entrances for the main exhibit floor is, there's going to be like a little platform where you can go up some stairs that go basically the floor above the exhibit hall. Make sure to go up there and say hi. That's the cosplay area. That's where a lot of us podcast guests, a lot of magazines are. So please come say hi. And also, I'll be handing out some amazing promo cards for Cryptid Camp, which is a cryptid-based TCG that I've been working on. I talked about it last episode and a couple episodes before, but we're going to be handing out some amazing promo cards, and I'm so excited. Now, aside from New York Comic Con, I'll also be at Crypticon and Loveland Frogman Festival in March. So for those of you in Ohio or Kentucky, West Virginia, or, you know, if you just like to travel, if you head into Cincinnati, outside of Cincinnati is Loveland, and that's where the amazing Loveland Frogman Cryptid is based out of. So I will be doing a panel at the Loveland Frogman Fest in March. So I just want to get everybody prepared for that and get everybody excited to go to Loveland Frogman Festival. Festival. 
But yeah, so other than doing Mothman Festival and preparing for all of these amazing conventions and expos coming up, I haven't really been able to watch many movies lately. And I feel bad because there's so many amazing movies out right now. So make sure if you've seen a great movie lately or if you streamed anything good, make sure to leave it in the comments as a recommendation so when I get a free chance, I can go check it out. So yeah, that was my simple little dive of some mysteries of the Amazon. The Amazon is so vast and the Amazon is so important for this entire world. So I would love to sit down and do some more research on it and add some more good stories and do maybe a follow up to it. Or maybe even I'll do a whole episode on Percy Fawcett and his expedition, because like I said, (laughs) there's some very interesting little tidbits about the story uh, that I could go into for a future episode. So, But yeah, with that being said, thanks so much again to everybody for listening. You all rock so much, and thanks so much for making my day every time I release one of these episodes with your comments and kindness and support. It totally makes my day. And make sure to go check out Patreon. I'll be releasing another post for patrons and members of Patreon to go leave their comments on what theme or cryptid episode you guys would like to see for the month of October. And it's going to be spooky season, so we got to keep it super spooky next month, right? (laughs) And I have a little sticker club too. So if you want any stickers every month, it's a fun little way to get stickers. I love sending out mail every month. I don't know. It's like I'm so old fashioned. I like love sending out mail. Like it's just it's one of my favorite things of what I do. It's why I love my shop. I love packing orders. It just I love it. (laughs) Plus, I like Okay, this side note. I really like buying stamps. I think stamps are so fun. The US Post Office did a recent collab with Dungeons and Dragons and I bought like 10 sheets. (laughs) So I get so excited. I literally have like 10 different variations of different stamps in my drawer right now. And I love stamps. I just think they're so fun. I think I'm going to start becoming a stamp collector. Side note, sorry, I got distracted. But yeah, other than that, if you guys like what you're hearing, make sure to go leave me a review on Spotify or Apple. It really makes my day to hear your kind words. It makes, makes me smile. So thanks so much for that. But yeah, other than that, I hope you're having an amazing day and an amazing week so far. And uh, next week, I think I'll be bringing you a Campfire Tales episode because after the Ohio Grassman episode, I had a lot of you reach out about some really spooky stuff that happened while you were hiking around the forest and grasslands of Ohio. So I uh, can't wait to get into those and talk about more spooky things. Oh, Side note, if you do have any spooky stories and they, you know, they don't have to be related to Grassman, they could be paranormal, they could be UFO encounters, they could really be anything that's just out of the ordinary, right? Make sure to go to campcryptedpod.com. There's a little contact section where you can submit your story for a Campfire Tales episode. I love to kind of dive into these stories and that way we can all bond over this strange and magical world that is Earth, right? <laughs> But yeah, other than that, like I said, I hope y'all are having an amazing week so far. Thanks so much for being the best campers in the world. And hey, until next time, take care.